Hello, Ian here from Dive Plays Workshop. Welcome back to another video. Um, this is the first of a three-part series on the, the followers of Grindelwald. Okay, so the first one up is uh, Rosier and um, I had quite a bit of fun on the coat and quite enjoyed this one but um, we're using similar colours throughout all three so that you don't have to go out and buy new colours if you haven't got them and uh, yeah, it's quite an enjoyable process doing the coat so hopefully you enjoy it um, let's get on with it Right, same as the other ones, it's black from beneath and uh, we're going grey from above now and maybe come out to about 45 degree angle, we'll see. So I'm concentrating up towards the top of the miniature. I'll leave the smaller the back in shadow. And then start the highlight there again. And stay out of the recesses. And we'll be highlighting the bottom of the coat with white so if you look at the miniature from this side You'll see the light will hit the shoulder there and it'll go into shadow into the middle of the back. And then I've started the highlight here where the miniature moves out the way again. So we should get a nice little nice little transition there. So the white for this young lady is going to be the hat and the shoulders, the chest area. Band at the coat and at the bottom of the coat as well, on the raised folds. And on the boots. Okay, so we're on to the base coat then, and I'm using um, Citadel's Castellan Green. I'm just going to cover the whole coat or overcoat. I'll do a quick wash now, equal parts of these three and uh, I thought I'd keep it thin to start with just in case it was too dark so we can easily add another shade if we need to. 
So I'm just going to stick to the the recesses with this and I don't want it to pull I just want it to just change the tone so I've got a bit heavy there and you want the bottom part of each crease and under there It's a bit heavy there, so I'll remove some that will push it back up into there because if it if it does pull, there's a danger of getting there, like a, a coffee stain effect, and I don't want that. Definitely don't want that. some from about halfway down the back and I want to feather that off now so I'm going to swap my brush for water now and push the pigment down And I want a bit between the the band and the brim. And I'm going to leave that dry, I think. Let's put a bit more there. Okay, second coat with the green wash now. I'm only going into the, the deeper, darker areas of this one now. So it's in the deepest folds.
So for this stage I've got equal amounts of um, purple wash and medium and again like we did last time I'm just going in the deepest recesses you know not not everyone just just the um, the ones where you can definitely see a, a great change in contour like here I just wanted to get a different tone on the on the green you know warmer shadow Just feather that off of water there. I'm going quite heavy in there. water then just to feather it off okay I think that's it for that stage so for the skirt I've got um, Incubi Darkness so hopefully that will go quite well with the, the green of uh, the overcoat. Actually, I think I might do the hat in the uh, same colour. We'll see, we'll have a think about that. Okay. All right, so we're going to work on the, the skirt area now. So I've got a Dark Reaper with a little bit of Thunderhawk blue in it. And I uh, should know the drill by now. Let's pick out the highlights. So I'm going to stay on one side of it. So I'm not coming on that side of the fold. I'm staying on this side. And the idea is to build up the highlight. So a second pass. You can see it's starting to pick up the pigment now on this pass now. So I'm not going to go right up there because that will be in shadow. So I'll start about there and work down the fold. So I'll pick out this edge, edge there on the top of that fold there. Same on this side. So 
So to highlight that, it's a Thunderhawk blue on its own. And with this one, I'm going to start further down again. So it's about there. center of this one working along that edge with the side of the brush This one is another highlight, Thunderhawk blue with a little bit of pale blue grey in it, or any light grey will do. Uh, it's going to pick out that highlight at the bottom. It's very thin, it's like a glaze consistency, so 10 strokes should build it up. Have a look at it if it needs more. Do a few more strokes. I think I'll do a couple more there. We'll move on to the hat. So we're going to use the same colours. So that's the Dark Reaper and Blue. And there seems to be two sections to this hat. You've got the, the beginning of the brim. Then there's a band on the hat. So I'll leave that dark. So just highlight the brim. And then the top of the hat. And I think my wet palette, the, the paper started to disintegrate. I'm getting little fibers there. So we'll start this again. And so while I'm sorting the colours out on the palette, I'm moving them to a different area. I've got a, a very thin glaze of Dark Reaper with a little bit of um, tiniest bit of black in it. And I'm just glazing in the, the very deepest recesses. Just to cover up any mistakes that I made with the, the brush stroke. So I'm going into that recess and pulling it up towards the edge of the highlight. If you make a mistake here, just go with the side of your brush again with the highlight again. Um, probably take a couple of passes. But, uh, we'll come back for the next stage and I'll carry on with the hat. So with the hat, we've got the top part of the hat and then there's a band that runs around there and then there's part of the, the rim. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight the rim and the top of the hat and just leave the band as it is. So I've got the Dark Reaper and from the Hawk Blue mix. I'm just going around the top of the rim. I'm not going all the way to the edge. I'm going to leave a little dark area at the base of the brim. 
And I'll highlight up to the top of the hat. And then on the side there, it's a little bit miscast, but it should be it's a pretty straightforward highlight. I'm going to leave the edge there dark. And I'll do the top of the hat as well. And we'll do another layer. I'm going to work inside the area, so I'm not going all the way down to the, the brim, uh, the edge of the brim, I'm just working up the top of the brim, or top third, just so I can intensify that highlight. And now I've got Thunderhawk blue. So staying up towards the band of that and highlighting the tip. Come around this side as well. I'm not sure if the side needs another highlight, but we'll do another highlight in top area of the hat which is in there so this is Thunderhawk blue with a little bit of light grey added to it I think we can add a little bit more light grey to that let's wait for it to dry while it's drying, I'll add another highlight down here. I think once we redefine the dark band, it should uh, make it stand out a bit more. And let's highlight the edge of the, uh, the hat now by using the side of my brush. Oh, I've got a hair on my brush, sorry. Definitely see it's miscast there. I'll just work my way around the miniature, um, the hat of the miniature, with the side of my brush and just pick out the highlight at the edge. And I think the hat is done. I did a quick um, little bit of grey on the shirt or the blouse and I picked out the edge with a lighter grey so I've, I've gone around the edge of the collar, the top edge and the, the triangular edge and the top of the shirt is looks as though it's slightly open so what I'm going to do now with a little bit of white added to it Let's just pick out that top part of the collar again. And the just that top bit of the blouse. I think that's enough just to define it, I think. And uh, let's put a little dot on the bottom. 
bottom there just to emphasize that little bit of highlight. Okay, um, I think we're winning. It's got light grey on my brush. No. Let's just try and pick that edge out again. be a bit too much but I can always pull it back with a wash okay coat next well, hopefully I've got the lighting sorted out because I'm filming in the daytime so um I'm going to layer up the coat now with uh, Castellan Green. Uh, I'm just going to pick out all the raised areas to start with. Push the pigment up the way. It's about three quarters down the back there. And then the folds. Let's pick them out. probably guess my style now where I pull the, the pigment into the highlight area or where I want it to settle that's just the edge of the brush there on the to the cloth. Now with the these folds up here I'm gonna go um, quite bright so I'm gonna go I'm not gonna leave too much shadow Just a case of blocking in the colour on these bits. This is going to take a couple of passes, I think, for it to pick it up. Don't forget the lapels. Right, I'll leave that dry. Okay, so we're going to go with uh, a second coat. I'm not going all the way to the end there, just start from about there. And, yeah. Good thing about this miniature is there's loads of little folds within folds. It's uh, it's really cool, nicely done. We'll try and get um, a few different tones going.
Let's see, I don't know if I'll highlight that again. Maybe one shade higher, but this, this one's going to be lighter than that one. That's, that's the kind of thing I'm on about. I'm doing a smaller area on this one, so I started there last time, started here this time. Just to try and create a little bit of volume. Shoulders, I'll go further up the back this time. Let's pull it onto the shoulder itself. I think if, if you wanted to, you could leave it here. Yeah, it's perfectly good. But I want... Um, I want more highlights on the front. I think it'll look silly if I don't highlight the rest to the same uh, same degree. So the next highlight, Lauren Forest. Same again. We're about halfway down now. Working our way back up that edge. I'm leaving a gap in the middle there because there's like a, a change in the contour. Halfway along this one, and pull it up. Sure, if I'll put a little, I won't touch that bit there. I'll just come down here. Quite a big fold here, so it'll be a broad highlight on this one. So, onto the, the chest area. So, the top of the chest there. Catch that little highlight under the uh, under the lady bump on the top of that crease in the air force we used to call them uh, the ladies lumpy fronts so uh, totally non pc i know but Seemed funny at the time. It was an accurate description, to be fair. Okay. 
The next highlight, I've added in some Elysian green to it. So it's about, i say it's more than 50-50 in favour of the Elysian green. And this is where we pick out more raised parts of each fold. So there's here and here. I'm not going to go in there at all. So on the top of that highlight, and I'm going to try and stay in the middle most of the way down. And split it there. Leave a gap in the middle. I'm not going in, well, I'll go down here. Just the edge there. Um, I'll go the whole length of this fold because it's quite prominent. Top third of that fold now. So I'm starting to the shoulder blade and pulling it up. There is a, a little fold there, so I'm trying to avoid that as well. And go either side of that. And the front. The lapels, I'm just doing the bottom V shape. Um, that's good. So, more Elysian green into the mix now, and it's getting close to pure Elysian green now. Building up that one there.
not going all the way, the whole length of this now. Halfway along. So the final highlight now is Elysium Green, hang on I shall show you, because this is how I've been working, I've got the Castellan Green there, I should have shown you this at the start really, <laughs> Castellan Green there, the Castellan Green and Lauren Forest little mix there, and then that's the Elysium Green into that mix, and then Elysium Green on its own. What else have we got? That's deep yellow and a white ink. And this pool here that you can't really see is water with a little bit of, um, I don't know, I can't remember if it was glaze medium or something like that, or flow improver. It might be glaze medium, I think. Um, so this mix here is Elysian Green I wanted to add a little bit of white to it but it started to go a horrible colour so I added some yellow to tone it down a bit a bit more now a little bit green into it So it's not as desaturated as just adding the, the white to it. So this is going to be the final highlight now. I'm just saying that this is the, the stuff that I add to my water. Um, I keep a little water pot, uh, water dropper bottle. And um, it's about three quarters water and a quarter part glaze medium. And I add when I'm thinning my paints and I, I want to do some blending, that's that's the water the mix that I'll use, and um, seems to work quite nicely. It's quite uh, it's quite forgiving. It, it slows down the the drying time on the paint as well, so you can blend and feather things out. Uh, I'd, I'd give it a go. Um, I quite like it. Right, so let's get on with this last highlight and. I've switched to a smaller brush because I don't trust myself with a camera in the way. And uh, let's go. Let's pick out that edge highlight there. Or if it goes too light for your taste, you can always do like a a mid-tone glaze over everything just to bring it back again. So I'm going for the very top of that crease. Maybe a little bit in there as well, on the fold of the coat. Might not be too apparent on this pass, it may pick it up on the second one. So no faith.
there's the second pass and it's picking it up now. Yeah, there we go. I'll go around the rest of the coat now. Let's try and get the edge of the lapels there. Just look for areas where you think the light would catch it with this much uh, light. Uh, definitely down here, on the edge of this one. So I think it's not looking too bad now. Um, I was doing some oh, I kind of say, hit my light. I was doing some painting last night, and I've still got some Payne's grey uh, knocking about. So I've made a very thin glaze. I was gonna top up some of the shadows because I think it's a lush colour. I think it would work quite well with this. Just going in the deepest of the recesses. It's very thin. And hopefully it'll just dry away to nothing really, but just change that tone slightly. Just remember um, a bit drooky violet or drooky eye violet purple wash anyway <laughs> and uh, I think this would be a nice little cheeky little lift and get the edge of the coat there. Okay. The, the blouse she's got, I did, um, I'm not sure if that was uh, a really light grey or I think it was a blue grey, but um, I was going to add another highlight to the edges so it's I did a little blue grey to some uh, white ink that I had on the palette earlier. I was going to pick out the edges of the, the collar. I don't think that'll do for a highlight. Let's get rid of that. There we are. Sorry, it's an awkward angle. So just the edges of the collar, so you're going to, along the the top line of the collar and then the 
the uh, the V shape as well. So I'm highlighting them down across the edge of the collar and then down the V and then a little bit at the top of the shirt. And I think we're done. The boots will just be I'll just dry brush them with a light grey and then give them a black wash and that should pick everything out. I hate doing shoes. So um I think that's it for now. Let's take some pictures and we'll do a wrap up. Okay, here we are finished another one on the base. The the only thing I did after finishing the the, the filming part was to add a tie and uh, just a black line between the the hat and the hair, a few highlights in the hair, but um it's all pretty straightforward stuff. So, all done. Um as I say, this is the first part of a, a three-part uh, series, so the next one will be Kral, and uh, we'll see you in that one. So if there's any questions, get in touch. Anything you want to see, get in touch. And uh, yeah, that's it from me for now, so we'll see you in the next video. All right, cheers.